right, all right, here is another one for you. No, it's item 34, still on specimen people. Refers to the following diagram, and it says a brick wall 10 meters high by 4 meters, 10 meters long wall by 4 meters high is insulated with a material of thermal conductivity 0 0.70 watt per meter per Kelvin. If the insulating material is 210 millimeter thick, the interface between the wall and the material is at 95 degrees Celsius and the rate of heat flow into the interface is 4 kilowatts. What is the temperature of the other end of the insulation? Now first off the bat we are going to get the equation Q over T that's the rate of heat flow is equal to K which is the thermal conductivity a, which is the area of the surface, uh, multiplied by theta 1 minus theta 2, where theta 1 is the hotter or higher temperature, and theta 2 is the lower temperature, over x, which is the distance the heat travels. Now, we're told that the rate of heat flow is... 4 kilowatts and we have uh, to make things easier change that 4 kilowatts to 4 um, to what so that would be 4 times 10 to the 3 watts and that's equal to the thermal conductivity which we got to be 0 0.70 watt per meter per kelvin please forgive my handwriting it's not very good at all um, times the area which would be 10 meter because that's the length times that 4 meter which is the height um, multiplied again by the temperatures that we have but we only have the first temperature which is 95 degrees celsius okay Probably should move this over. Hold on. See if I can get a little bit more space to work with. Minus theta two, which would be the cool temp the the um lower temperature. I need to stop saying cooler temperature. The lower temperature all over. Well, I had to cut off the x here. The x which are the distance the heat um, travel and we're told that the material was 200 the brick wall was 210 millimeters thick so it travels 210 millimeters we're changing that to meters so it's 210 times 10 to the minus 3 meters now let's see we're trying to find theta 2 so right here we're going to take this 210 times 10 to the minus 3 and multiply it by this 4 times 10 to the 3 watts and putting that into the calculator should get 840 watt meter is equal to 0 0.70 watt per meter per kelvin um, multiplied by 10 times 4 is 40 meters squared and that should give you 28 what will remain 1 meter will cancel 1 per meter will cancel the meter here so we'll have meter stuff meter squared per Kelvin still remains and that would be multiplied by the 95 degrees Celsius minus theta 2. Now, seeing that this distribute, um, these bracket means that it's a distributive equation here, we'll divide both sides by 28 watt meter per Kelvin. 28 watt meter per Kelvin.
Let me see if it's this here for Kelvin. Now, 28, here, 8.20 over 28 should give you 30 Kelvin. Now, you just flip this because the per Kelvin is at the bottom or in the denominator, so it would just be Kelvin now. And that's going to be equal to 95 degrees Celsius minus theta 2. Now, 30 Kelvin, now change in Kelvin or degree change in Kelvin is equivalent to a degree change in degree, um, shouldn't say degree Kelvin, change in Kelvin is equal to, um, the, or is equivalent to the degree Celsius change. So, um, I believe it's okay if we subtract this, like this. So it's 95 degrees Celsius equal to minus theta 2 and this is getting crowded let me get stuff off the page i think i should just erase everything off okay i believe i had 30 kelvin minus 95 degrees Celsius, you can say Kelvin too, or you could say 30 degrees Celsius, it doesn't really matter at this point in time, is equal to minus theta 2, we're trying to find theta 2, now we would get minus 65, I think that answer is in degrees Celsius, I'll just keep that, minus theta 2, now we want theta 2, not negative theta 2, so divide both sides by negative 1, and we'll have or come to realize that theta 2 is simply the same thing, 65 degrees Celsius, because the negative sign cancels the negative sign. Okay? Yeah. So the answer is D, 65 degrees Celsius.